Uh, I've got some, a couple of things in here in your handouts. Uh, this is just to give you guys an idea of, uh, you know, the types of plants or, you know, animal no base material that could be used for, you know, uh, as ingredients for making a tilapia feed. Uh, you know, you have the animal protein, you have the plant protein, uh, cereals and byproducts, uh, minerals and other additives. So this is just something for you guys to take home and you know, if you ever get to the point where you're gonna make the feeds yourself, this would be a good reference uh, point. Yeah, on this plant protein uh, scale, what are these numbers on this? These are crude, uh, crude protein. So for example, yeah. So for example, if you look at a sweet potato leaf meal, it's 29% crude protein. So you know we have we do have a lot of uh, sweet potato here. We harvest the the sweet potato, export it, but we throw away the leaves. So you know we can actually take those leaves or just have them lay out in the sun and have it dry and then you can collect the, the leaves that are dry uh, and use it for uh, grinded or uh, the best, like I was saying to Mr. Song Song, the best way to uh, prepare something like a sweet potato leaf is through a hammer mill. You know, because whenever you're, uh, you know, you're uh, basically using ingredients, the best uh, feed ingredient would be those fine powder. You want it to be as you know grounded down. Uh, grounded down. So a machine like a hammer mill, it would be the best way to, you know, uh, turn these things into a powder. Now one more thing. What is this? Uh, let's go down to the copra cake coconut. What is this? What's the star? Twenty-three star. What's the what's the star? I'm looking there. I couldn't find it. Uh, if you look at the uh, copra cake. Yeah. Copra. Co copra cake. This is the uh, uh, copra meal, right? No, why yeah. the star? If you look at the... In the far, far form or newly harvested coconut or...? No, this is the uh, after they take out the oil. Oh, okay. Yeah, but also no? Yeah, but his question, okay. yeah, but his question is why the ash why the star? Is um, it high in calcium and phosphorus? Yeah. You see, the I was just about to say that if you look at the legend on the bottom. Huh? Yeah. Nothing that looks like a star at all. There, region. Thank you. All right. So the next piece of paper is uh, basically, this is the actual instruction on how to, you know, not not the one that we're preparing today, but this is the the actual recipe and how much of it based on the the feed that we made in Thailand. Uh, last October, we took uh, you know about eight farmers to uh, Thailand for uh, uh, tilapia feed making training. <coughs> And you know we actually we spent one afternoon uh, making feet at the Asian Institute of Technology, and this is the uh, the recipe that we we use to make that feet. In Taiwan. In Taiwan. Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. All right. So you know you if you have all the ingredients, you can use this as a guide to you know to 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 make them. If no further question, we're gonna start the presentation. So basically, this is our outline for today's uh, workshop for on the uh, tilapia feed part. Uh, we have the introduction about the first uh, three to four slides. And then we're gonna do an exercise. And the exercise is called uh, the Pearson Square. And the Pearson Square is basically just a way of determining how much of this, like the recipe that we have here, just determining how much of fish meal, how much of cassava meal, and all those kind of things by doing that equation. And then number three, uh, 
these are just pictures that uh, show us the process of actually making the feed. So, you know, we start with the introduction and basically what is nutrition? It's a process where uh, an organism takes in food, breaks it down, absorbs it, and uses the energy and nutrients it contains to make body tissues move around or reproduce. So why are we in the business of, you know, going to the store and buying a 50 pound sack or, you know, making our own? It's basically, you know, to, uh, you know, to enable the fish to grow, you know, stay healthy and, you know, get to the point where it grows to market size so that we can sell it. The bottom line is, you know, we're doing this because we want to make a profit out of it, if possible. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, it's a loss cost. All right. So, feeding biology, herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores. Herbivores are basically animals that do not need high protein. They have a low protein uh, feed requirements, which is about less than 20% crude protein. This type of fish are like carp. You guys are familiar with what a carp is, right? A good example of a carp is, uh, you know, not for food, but koi. Koi is a form of carp, but you know, they're grown more for ornamental. But you also have grass carps, and other type of carps that are, uh, you know, uh, that uh, other species of carps that are being, you know, uh, cultured for food, okay? So those guys are herbivores because you know they mostly consume you know uh, plants, aquatic plants. So you know they don't they don't have a, a really high need for for protein. And then you have the tilapias, which are omnivores or they're omnivorous. They require a higher protein, uh, between 25 percent to to 30 percent crude protein in the in the feed in order for these guys to, basically we grow fish, you know, we feed them for muscle growth and, you know, and for other, you know, developmental purposes. And if you dissect these guys up and you open the internal, you know, and look at their internal anatomy, you know, their, their anatomy from the herbivore to the omnivore, they're actually different, you know, because they have, like the herbivores, because they have to process, you know, uh, aquatic plant materials, their intestines are longer, you know, because it takes a longer time to to get the the nutrient out of something like a, you know, uh, kangkung. If they eat the kangkung or or whatever new uh, you know plant-based uh, feed. Uh, the last one there, that's a picture of a grouper. So that's a, a good example of a carnivore. And these are predatory you know, fish that feeds on other fish. And in order to maintain these guys in an aquaculture environment, they require high protein feed, up to 40% you know, you know, crude protein and higher. So these are just very important information in your attempt to produce your own feed. Uh, you gotta know with what you know whether this uh, uh, species or animal is a, is a herbivore, omnivore, or a a uh, carnivore. The higher the protein, the more expensive. Okay. All right. So, what are the you know basic components of a you know of feed making? Basically, you have your proteins. Uh, major ingredients are, you know, fish meal. But you can also, there's a lot of work happening in using, you know, plant-based protein, like uh, soybean. You know, we, uh, Mr. Song Song and I were just talking, you know, what are the, you know, actual sources of fish meal. And, you know, a lot of the fish meal that are being produced is coming out of Central and South America. You know, where, uh, you know, you have these ships actually uh, catching a lot of uh, menhaden, sardine, herring, and all those kind of, and what's, 
common about those uh, fish is that they're small, they're bony, and they're oily. Okay, so you know, because people really don't like to eat fish that's bony. And that's why, you know, uh, they're using these fish is for the production of fish meal. Uh, I also saw a, uh, but you know, fish meal can, doesn't only come from, you know, a small bony oily fish. I saw a, uh, a documentary where, you know, this big Japanese ship was, uh, you know, uh, harvesting cut, harvesting cut in uh, Alaska. Is it cut, Chad? Pollock. 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 It's Pollock. It's Pollock, rather. And they, this, they, they got this big ship where you know, they'll just, you know, sign the, the Pollock. You know, it goes into the ship, they fillet. Everything else that's not fillet for McDonald's, is turned into fish meal. They actually have a factory on the ship that process, you know, uh, the... So in other words, bottom line is that, you know, uh, fisheries waste can also be utilized into making into fish meal. And uh, Mr. Song Song and I were talking, we were discussing this early that, you know, a lot of our fishermen, they go up, go out and catch tuna. They sashimi the tuna, but what do they do with the, the leftover? that is a resource that can be actually be, be turned into a source of fish meal. Uh, part of the reason that fish meal is getting expensive is that, you know, the supply is getting, you know, less and less. So, uh, you know, and we also have to realize that not only are, you know, aquaculture producer or feed makers are using fish meal, but they're also the poultry produce, uh, uh, feeds makers are also using fish meal, so as the swine producers. So we're competing for that new particular new source of uh, uh, protein. With the lipids, when they catch uh, herring or sardines, those bony, oily fish, from the same process, not only do they get the fish meal, but through the process, they also get the fish oil. That's another new ingredient that is used in the production of making pellets or feeds. So what I have today for our activities, uh, not fish oil, but you know, you can also use plant-based oil for, you know, for making uh, your, your homemade you know, uh, feed, all right? Is there any restriction uh, on other, let's say, livestock, fatties, acid? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure about restrictions with livestock, no, you know, I'm just aware that, you know, a lot of what's being used in, in, in the, the making of uh, feed would be from plant-based or fish-based, no, oil. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that, uh, you know, on animal feed, livestock, mm. Mm. there is an, is, there's a restriction mm. on using Let's say cow. Mm. Yeah. To use for feed. Yeah. I know that, you know, for the protein part, yeah. they will use blood meal. They will use a feather meal from, you know, poultry production. Oh. You know. Uh, if I might chip in on that one, uh, this has come up with the uh, <coughs> cow disease. Yeah. Mm. And uh, one reason for that uh, cow disease was actually that the, the uh, fish, or not, oh, sorry, not the fish, but the, the, the meat mm -hmm. that they put into the, the, the feed wasn't cooked uh, well mm -hmm. enough and therefore mm -hmm. that the stuff would spread. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, now regulations, modern regulations say you don't use any uh, mm -hmm. animal uh, mm -hmm. parts for, mm -hmm. uh, for feed anymore. But, you know, that is in the terrestrial livestock. One of the things that they always mention to us is that, you know, uh, swine, cattle, they're all mammals or warm-blooded, uh, you know, animals, whereas fish are, are you know, are not warm-blooded animals. So the, and maybe Chad, you can help me with this, but, you know, the transfer of certain pathogens to another sp species is, you know, it's not a, it's not, you know, really going to affect anything. Okay.
All right, so, you know, carbohydrates, uh, basically anything that is starchy and at the end would, you know, uh, produce sugar. Uh, we ha what I have as an example up there is, you know, uh, mendioca or cassava. For today's demonstration, we're going to use banana. Okay. Uh, you can also use sweet potato. You can also, you know, uh, use, what else do we have here? Breadfruit banana, uh, sweet potato, uh, those are would, you know, would be, would fall under your, your starch for, for the feet. So the whole idea when we came up with this project was that, you know, we are producing, Rhoda is, uh, you know, producing a lot of uh, sweet potato and taro, but not all of those are being exported to Guam or Saipan. So what are they doing with the rejects, you know? Maybe this is something that we can be, you know, utilizing for, for you know, if you're growing tilapia, you know, you can turn it into, use it as an, an ingredient of the feed. Uh, Saipan is not well known for producing uh, a lot of sweet potato and taro, but, you know, I've been there for the last six years and I see a lot of banana. And they're just throwing these things away. So why not turn it into a tilapia feet or some kind of feet? All right. Does it have to, um, in the, when you use tilapia, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, banana, mm -hmm. does, it, does it have to be uh, ripe? Does it have to be ready for? Uh, Mr. Song Song was just asking the same question. The, the, the idea of using starches would be, you know, to cook them, okay? So that would, you know, uh, may they be, you know, overly ripe, you know, just right, almost there. <laughs> you know, uh, the important thing is to cook them uh, before using it as, a, a, as an ingredient for the f uh, feet. The whole thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Because even the, you know, the cassava starts, which is, we're, Actually, using the cassava more as a binder for the feet. So we're going to take water, boil, boil it, put some of this in there, and then cook it slowly until it gets to the point where it's uh, sticky. And that, then that's the point where we put the ingredients together and basically, you know, get it to the point where it's a dough. And then we'll take the dough and put it in here and then just, uh, oh. yeah. So we don't dry, you don't dry it yet? After we, it comes out as, you know, this is yeah. a, a, a meat mincer. Yeah. So it comes out as like a spaghetti, yeah. but then you spread it out and kind of like break it into smaller pieces. And then that's the time where you take it out and dry it. Uh, the way you're describing it is just for an immediate direct feeding. But early in the morning, I, I, I'm groovy, so I don't want to wind that guy. So basically, the idea is... My, my interest is to be able to pelletize them and store them. So anytime I'll just crack it up and throw it in. Okay, so it, it, this thing needs planning. Okay. So, you know, if I were going to make a feed, I'll make a feed for next week. Okay. So because basically you need... The, the, the drying process, you need at least 24 hours. So, you know, that's why we're going to cover drying, bagging, and storage. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Mendiola. Uh, uh, just a, a thought in that uh, Mr. Yusuf's uh, comment about the drying and preserving of feed. Mm. Um, I've watched this uh, some of the educational uh, mm -hmm. video yep. from Australia. Yep. And how they were able to facilitate that in a more expeditious manner instead of drying it in the sun. Mm -hmm is uh, through a microwave system. Uh, you can do this by oven. Yeah. But, you know. It's just the, that, 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 that energy that's involved. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm being cheaper, you know, <laughs> because I, 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 feel, I feel my farmers, you know, uh, they have to deal with CUC. So, you know, we, we don't, have, you know, our CUC now is about 40 some, like 40 cents per kilowatt. So, you know, I eat a nice barbecue of steak and chicken, and I need to burn that calorie, so 
I'll, I'll use this as my exercise, you know, to make something, you know, <laughs> rather so. Yeah, it's nice to, you know, to run an oven, but I'm not going to use an oven to, to dry my feet when, you know, the average temperature is 80 some degrees, you know, and I can have this thing dry in 24 hours. So I'm just being, you know, like my wife always said, let's be practical. The next other ingredient is your vitamins and minerals. So, you know, I'll go ahead and pass this around. This is uh, something that I got from Thailand when we were there last year. And basically that's a combination of, uh, of uh, vitamins and minerals. Uh, but these guys, uh, the vitamins and minerals are basically, uh, you know, uh, ingredients in the feed that are, that are the least, you know, as far as percentage wise. Usually you only need, uh, put about 1% of vitamins, vitamins and 1% of uh, minerals. But you know the vitamins, you you know they are also one of the the things in the ingredient that you know pre pretty much you know uh, you know their potency uh, basically goes away in 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 less than a month, especially if uh, heat is involved. Okay, so you know that's why storage is very important. Okay, the whole idea that you know the whole idea we're do doing here basically is you know. Uh, we're trying to provide the fish, we're trying to provide the fish with a complete diet. You know, uh, yeah, we can collect bread from the bakery and give it to the fish, but you know, that's mostly fat and you know, uh, you know, because what is bread made of? Just flour, fats, right? And uh, you know, yeast and salt and maybe that's it. But you know, where's the protein there? So if the tilapia requires 30% protein and you're just feeding it uh, bread, you know, the protein content in that feed is not as, as high as, you know, when you have a complete feed. Right. Yep. But um, vitamins and minerals too, uh, mm -hmm. is there any sort of locally available source for vitamins other than this? Uh, that's something that we, you know, we usually, you know, get something like that because everything is, is it's complete. If you're gonna, you're gonna have your vitamin C, so you're gonna, you know, uh, extract from the lemons, I mean. <laughs> uh, you know, something like this, and you only put 1% of this, let uh, 1% of, you know, 500 grams. You know, that's not a lot. So you only use a little bit of this. Most of what goes into feed are your, you know, uh, even the proteins. Uh, even though proteins, you know, uh, you, it's what, 30% uh, for the tilapia, 30% uh, is the requirement for the tilapia. Percentage wise in the composition of the feed, it's not big. You know, most of what you're putting in the feed is actually the, the carbohydrate. Is, is, is there a table to compute the necessary formulation to add to the feeding process? We're going to do a simple one today. Okay. okay. But there is something uh, that we can provide you. Uh, you know, the simple one is just, you know, to give you guys the feeling. And that's when we get to the Pearson Square. Just to give you guys the, the you know, the feeling of, uh, do, by doing this calculation, I know that this is, you know, how much protein I need to put in the feed, and this is how much, you know, the rest. Okay. Okay, so the protein requirement for tilapia, and this is the percent crude protein, as they get older, the protein requirement goes slower. So when they're just fry, which is the picture on the top, you would need 50 to 55% crude protein. Well, you know that fish meal is 65% crude protein. That's why when you buy feed, when you buy the feed for the fry, it's a lot more expensive than when you buy the feed for the adult tilapia because more, there's more uh, crude protein in that feed rather than the other ingredients. So fingerlings, Crude protein starts falling down. 
to 35 to 40 percent crude protein. The juveniles, the ones that are about this size, now their requirements is 30 to 35 percent crude protein. And then adults, that would be something that is like 300 grams to one pound, which is 454 grams. You know, you only need 25 to 30 percent uh, crude protein. And the reason for that is that just like little kids, just like young kids or, you know, uh, uh, teenagers, their metabolism is, you know, much you know, faster. So they require, you know, uh, more of this. They're growing, in other words. So, and their body is expanding. They're building muscles and everything else in their body. So that's why the, the protein content is much higher than when they are already adult, you know. When they become adults, especially the female tilapia, a lot of the, the you know, they stop growing. And they start, you know, uh, you know uh, putting a lot of that energy into reproduction. Uh, the male, you know, will continue growing, but at a certain stage, it'll stop, you know, basically, you know, stop growing. Uh, I just put this up because uh, for the purpose of size, so if you're making feet, you know, these are the different sizes of feet, uh, starting from the bottom. If the fish is between 50 to 454 grams, usually the, the, the feet size are 3 sixteenths of an inch. And then for, uh, 3 16, 5 uh, 16. And when they're between 30 to 50 grams, 332, 1 16th, and so on. Until, you know, when they're just starting out, uh, when they're just, you know, uh, fries, then you, you feed them the powder. Uh, another important thing to learn about when, when it comes to feed is the FCR. And this is the feed conversion ratio. It's basically the number of pounds or kilograms of the ration needed to produce one pound or one kilogram of animal under standard conditions. So basically, FCR is equal to the total pounds of feed fed, how much feed you give them, divided by the total pounds of fish weight gain. And an example is given there where you have put 10 pounds of feed, and you got uh, to get eight pounds of fish weight gain. So if you divide the 10 by eight, you get 1.25. When it comes to FCR, you want to be lower than 2. If you get an FCR of 0 0.5, I need to meet with you. And I'll bring close to, you know, document the fact that you've gained a 0 0.5 FCR because you're doing something very good, okay? I mean, you know, so, you know, uh, if your FCR is, is greater than two, then you gotta check your, your uh, culture procedure because you're greater doing, three. yeah, greater than three because you're doing something bad, okay? means basically what FCR means is that, you know, if it's greater than three, that means that you're wasting feed. You're feeding these guys, but they're not growing. Okay? If you're at two or less, you're doing very good. Okay? If you're at 1.51, you're doing very good. What would be the influence that would achieve a 0.5? No, no, I'm, I was just being sarcastic. No, no, but see, maybe the timing of the fish, because chicken, <coughs> no. I, I grow chicken, mm. I chicken. Mm. So, you know, I, I tend to compare the way I feed my mm. chicken mm. and the supposed mm. these bats, as opposed to mm. the other bats, mm. where I would feed this every two hours. It's, it's managed. Whenever I feel like feeding, mm -hmm. you know, on a record, so the gain is far better mm -hmm. than the one that is mm -hmm. consistently yeah. fed on a shorter period of time. Yeah. Little ways of feeding.
So it, FCR, it's basically turning feet into muscles. Yes. So uh, your management, the quality of the feet, you know, uh, I, in fish, in fish production, I would say, Chad, you're welcome to uh, in, interject. I would say ex excellent water quality, consistency, you know, like you said, feeding it at the right time, feeding it the right amount. Feed, what I mean by feeding right amount, there are actually calculations that you can do by taking, uh, you know, uh, sampling of the fish that you have in the tank. And, you know, like, uh, Fish that are between maybe 300 grams to almost a pound, you would, you know, uh, feed them about 3% of their weight. So if you're feeding them, uh, you know, less than, than what is their re required or you're ov overfeeding them and you're, you know, uh, damaging the the water quality, then you know uh, that would go against this fish uh, growing, getting that uh, FCR. Okay, I'm trouble and I, I cannot follow the uh, ten pounds feed. Mm. Uh, this is the ten pound feed that is given, let's say for over six month period, okay. to gain so, so, you know. So in six months you're gonna gain eight pounds. Mm. Uh, you take the eight divided by uh, the ten yeah, divided right. by ten, and you know that's one point two five. Yeah. You for the life of the fish, or every day gain for that period. Uh, the period of time. Yeah, period yeah, time. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because total pounds of feet yeah. fed yeah. over that time frame. Yeah. I'm and, I was thinking yeah. I'm gonna gain eight pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I, that's what I was saying earlier. And I need Klaus and I needs to check you and record what you're doing so that we can share it with the farmers. <laughs> I, I like this uh, idea, the senator over here, you know, the consistency of fitting it on time. Yeah, time Re record keeping. So I was, I was thinking of uh, implementing mm. the automatic feeder. Mm. So you program it on time, so precise, punctual, mm. properly. Mm. Mm. If you can afford it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, you know, automatic fever, uh, feeder that has to be on a timer, yeah. you know, and you have to, you know. So, for me, it depends on the scale of the operation. If it's a big, if it's a big operation, then you know, yeah. it, you know, it. Sometimes it's much better to put it on a feeder uh -huh. rather than have somebody there, you it's know, spending, spending half the day trying yeah. to feed, you know, uh, ten hectares of. <laughs> yes, Mr. Mendel. So, uh, so basically, the conclusion of the matter when it comes to the the success of productivity mm -hmm. in the tilapia endeavor is it basically sums up the the fact that all those factors that you're you're bringing out mm -hmm. has to be. In, 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 in harmony with each other. Mm -hmm. In other words, every, every process of the tilapia cultivation process has to be, mm -hmm. uh, how do you say, complement each other. You mm -hmm. cannot overfeed, you cannot underfeed, and most importantly also, mm -hmm. the, the quality of the habitat under which you're cul culturing them. We call that water quality. Yeah. 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 Okay, so all those have to be uh, all calibrated, fine-tuned. Mm -hmm. So basically, the bottom line is we, like for example, myself being a, a, an infant mm. in this concept, it, I have to basically, it's like... Uh, All that put together on Cotone is management. Tri trial and error, yeah. Management. Tri management yeah. And, yeah. and exactly fine-tuning the science exactly. to, to come to that, like you said, 1.5 yeah. uh, FCR. Shoot for that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that that uh, yeah. wow, that's gonna be a uh, yeah. So this is not so, this is not something where you know you feed on Monday, you come back on Friday. No, no, no. Because you <laughs> no, know, no. you know, yeah. yeah. Because then you know you do that and you will not you get your desired result. Exactly. But if you put in the time, then you will get the profit. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. 
All right. Uh, Mike, can we just go back? Uh, I have a, okay. So the FCR really is not on pound, but it is based on kilogram. Is that? It is, it is a ratio. Mm. So the mm. unit itself doesn't matter. Mm. What's that again? It is a ratio, so the unit itself doesn't matter. Oh. You use pounds yeah. and kilograms. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever you want. It depends on where you are in, in that part of the world because, you know, we're pound based. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just to give you an idea and why aquaculture is such a, you know, I don't know, I'm biased. I'm always promoting aquaculture. But, you know, you look at production, meat production, and you look at cow, you know, basically to gain one pound of meat, you need eight pounds of feet. Swine, to gain one pound of pork, you need three pounds of feet. Poultry, to get one pound of poultry, you need two pounds of feet. But to get uh, one pound of tilapia, you only need 1.6 pounds of feet. So, you know, if I were, if you, if you ask me, you know, given the four choices, what, you know, what farming would I go to? If I were a business person, I would go to that new uh, one, you know, the lower, uh, you know, FCR. Because I'm just saying that you know, you know, but you. That's the optimum. Yeah. No potential. I'm, I'm promoting everything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, and 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 that's the beauty of uh, fish farming. I don't know, Chad, if any other species have a higher FCR. Than, than, than fish. I know that, you know, uh, some fishes are actually lower than tilapia. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's in the one to two range. Yeah. And I don't but, think anyone's gotten below one. Yeah. But, you know, I, I still, I'll still take the 1.6 over the two. Yeah, but, uh, <clears throat> okay, the, uh, this is only applies to tilapia and rabbit fish. Uh, most fish are between one and two. Most fish mm. between one and two. Mm. Okay. That are commercially cultured, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, mm. okay. Because I'm thinking of, mm. how about grouper? You, I saw a picture of grouper. Have you mm. worked with grouper? Mm. And what's mm. the ratio on grouper? Mm. It's a little bit higher than two, but... Mm. Uh, two pounds to one pound? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it depends on the species and it depends on how you feed them. Right now, grouper are fed a lot with uh, wet, wet fish, trash fish. Mm -hmm. They don't uh, grow them up with pellets. Mm -hmm. So that's why the FCR is a little higher. Mm -hmm. uh, but you get a better price too. It's a, it's a, you know, we have to understand that a lot of the marine fin fish, they're just now developing, developing. developing. You know, There's been, uh, yeah. hundreds of years of research mm -hmm. in uh, terrestrial agriculture. Yeah. Maybe right. only a few decades of research in aquaculture. Yeah. yeah. The reason why I raise that yeah. is because the market right now mm -hmm. is in this area, starting from Guam all the way north. Mm -hmm. uh, grouper has a better price mm -hmm. range than, uh, than let's say, tilapia. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, if it's two to one, and the market is six dollars mm -hmm. to one. You know, I mean, it's better that we go to group it. The problem is that the, uh, and I'll cover this a little bit in my presentation, that to culture marine fish, it's much more uh, technologically challenging, mm -hmm. much more expensive. Correct, right, right. So, and culturing tilapia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, don't get yes, me wrong. Yes, I, 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 I am in favor of tilapia, yeah, but don't get me wrong. No, so we're not seeing the market. But we're trying I, to, uh, mm. yeah, and that's why uh, Mike is trying to get marine fish hatchery technology going here because there is potential, uh, but it, it's going to take the technology to be in place in order to do it. Yeah. And even if you have a, with the uh, marine fish, fish, you have much higher input uh, as, for example, with a chicken farm, mm -hmm. but uh, you get more more profit out of your fish than you would get out of a chicken. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And what, I've seen the uh, statistics of import into Guam alone mm -hmm. from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. On grouper, mm -hmm. and if it is two two pound of feet to one pound, mm -hmm. 
I would, you know, venture into that mm -hmm. because I saw the, the numbers right. that's being imported to Guam and if they're selling for, let's just say $5 for purpose of right. discussion. Eh? Mm -hmm. And they're bringing in, let's say, every month 10,000 mm pounds. -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> that's enough mathematics yeah. mm -hmm. to get the project, you know, on mm -hmm. the right track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's good that you guys are taking the lead. We, we are making progress with regards to, you know, and that's why Dr. Callan is, you know, uh, working with us and w hopefully will continue to work with us because we've already got to the point where we have the rabbit fish spawning. I, even though we're working on rabbit fish, that is like our stepping stone. You start with rabbit fish, then we graduate to other, other species. You got to start somewhere. Mike, you have to also tell the people here that this is the first time ever that uh, we had success with that species. So we actually made history in the sea. Mike. Yeah, we actually, you know, spawned uh, the rabbit fish in the tank. Yeah, but how, you know, how, now the challenge that Chad and I are working on now is the larval rearing part. And I don't want to steal his thunder. <laughs> he'll, he'll talk about his project. I, I like that huh, because I'm yeah. thinking of market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking. Not the technical side, I'm thinking yeah. of the market. Yeah. yeah. I want to connect. But that. by the way, so we're here because uh, we got close to $100,000 of funds from DLNR under the MCP uh, program, which is funded by NOAA. So we got 69000 for the rabbit fish, and the, thir the other 32000 is for the tilapia feet. So uh, we're here today to because the project should be ending in September, and and you know uh, this is one of the required activities that we share what we have accomplished so far with the community seeing in my white. Okay. Okay. So basically, this is the uh, Pearson Square. This is not the uh, only way of determining you know percentages of feet that you're uh, you know that you can. Uh, you also have the alge algebraic you know, method. You have the trial and error, and you have the the, the linear uh, uh, program, computer program that you can use. But you know the algebraic and the linear are mostly used in when you get to the feed, uh, commercial scale feed mill level. So the trial and error and the Pearson square are. This is something that you know us the farmers can can work with to uh, you know to basically figure out how much of each, you know, uh, how much of each of this ingredient we, we, we will need to put in the, for in formulating the whole feed. So the Pearson Square is basically named after a scientist, uh, Dr. Pearson, that came up with this uh, you know, uh, way of determining the, the percentages or the amount of, of ingredients to put in a feed. And basically, as you see earlier, uh, you know, the sub-adult to the adult fish, you know, uh, they do not require higher proteins compared to the fry at 55. Uh, you know, those guys, they can, you know, uh, basically survive and with 30% desired protein. So basically what you do is you just draw a box and put the 30% protein level, the desired protein level in the middle. Okay, so if, you, if you're using fish meal, we, we know, remember the handout that I gave you guys? The one right in front of you, Uncle Chris? Okay, yeah. Look at the fish meal, what's the percentage? Fish meal, where are you? To your left, upper. 64.3. Okay, so 64 is there, right? Okay, so we put down fish meal, 64%. All right, and then look at the sweet potato leaf meal. This is just for the sake of uh, doing this exercise. It's on under plant protein. Same, same paper. Yeah, on the green, green. 29.2. Okay, so we got 29 there, right? Okay, so the first thing you do, you know already that you're shooting for a 30% crude protein no feed. 
Okay, so the first thing you do is you minus these two. So 64 taking away 29 is 35. Okay? All right. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. I, I don't follow that. Where do you get 64? That's on your list. Yeah, but how do you get do I That is that's a I put on the scale the the 64 is already determined through analysis okay. that fish meal that oh. fish meal contains 64. Huh? Yeah, and that's why you have the figures there. Okay. Some scientists long ago did the more, more. The, the, the test, the, the dry test in a lab and say and determine that you know the fish meal contains crude protein of 64 so, percent. So, so in other words, uh, the the requirement is 64, but you put in sweet potato and you know that sweet potato is 29. Already, is that what that's a given right. already. Yeah. Okay, so you, we're looking for the difference, so therefore we subtract. Oh, you don't get by that. Okay. Subtract. Yeah, on this side you subtract. Okay. okay, so look at the arrow. There's a line here with the arrow going up. Okay. There's another arrow that the line is going down. So you take 64 <coughs> minus 30 and you come out with... 34. 34. Okay? Because you minus the the fish meal with the desired protein level. Okay? Oh, excuse me, can you backtrack? What, where's the first one that you... 64 minus 30. No, no, no. The uh, animal protein... The fish meal. Animal protein less no, no, plant why? protein. This Where's is the... the arrow there you're talking about? The outside arrow? No, this arrow is going down here. What is, that? what is that line? That is basically subtracting the fish fish meal for the desired oh, okay. uh, crude protein. Okay, okay, okay. You're basically trying to get to have the formulation so at the end it bec the, the final product, the feed that you make has 34% okay, uh, protein. The outside arrow is This is just uh, to show you that Less plant protein. Yeah, 29%. Okay. No. okay, so we did this part, right? We took the 64 minus the 30, and it gives you 34. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the other side. From the sweet potato? From the sweet potato, minus 30. So 20, 30 minus 29 okay. is 1, right? 1. 1. Okay. okay, so that's why the 1 is there. Okay, so now this one is a sum. Remember left side is the difference, minus. This side is the sum, plus. So you take the 34 here, plus 1, is 35. So what do you see? Both sides are now 35, right? They're the same, left and the right side are the same. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm, well, it's good. All, 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 I'm, I'm very poor in math. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how do you determine 29% on the sweet potato? Is that per pound or per ton? Or per it's already an analysis that was done a long time ago. But, but how much do I. It doesn't matter. If you have a ton, it's always 29%. Depending on the percentage, it's always 29%. Yeah, Either one pound or ten pounds is still very mm. high. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Even oh, if it's a memo of sweet potato, even if it's a memo of sweet potato, memo of sweet potato. They're they're talking they're they're talking now. Oh. Yeah. So, so, if it's a memo or a right. uh, uh, you know violet, you know it's still sweet potato. <laughs> Mm -hmm. On the line, on the right column, I mean mm -hmm. right arrow going down. Mm -hmm. What was that you said? Uh, is that plant protein? Plants. What is that? No, no, no. The other one, the one going down. What is that? This. What I was saying is that uh, you know you. Uh, okay. Uh, remember we. What this is, is the. This is the result of 
the sweet potato and the desired protein for right, the right, tilapia. Right, right. One. Protein, okay. Yeah. Uh, the Let me finish and I will answer that. Okay. Let me finish. Okay. Uh, this is a type typo. This is supposed to be 35. Both of them have to be 35. Okay. Okay. okay? All right. So I'll correct it using a mark. <laughs> Okay, so now it's 35. Okay, so you you add this two, it becomes 35. All right. Then you divide the one by the 35, and it comes to 0 0.02. Okay. You divide the 34 to the 35, and it becomes 0 0.97. Then the next thing is you multiply by 100, and you get 2.85 okay you do the same things 0 0.97 times 100 becomes 97.1 okay so 100 is a constant right so to answer mr Ockel's question now this is the fish meal side the upper part is the fish meal as i was saying earlier Usually the proteins, you do not require a lot of it in the formulation of the feed. For the purpose of making this feed with just these two ingredients, you only need 2.85% of fish meal versus 97.1% of sweet potato leaf. Okay? All right. So you're going to have more sweet potato in the ingredient leaf than fish meal and that will still give you the 30 percent protein okay now, now translate those details that you're saying mm. into the growth of the fish do you gain more by following that remember chat can you go back keep on going back We're formulating for the adult, no, uh, go, yeah, the adult, because their requirement is 25 to 30% protein. So, yeah, it's back up. Uh, so that's why we have the 30% there. So if we're formulating for the, for the baby, this is going to be 55. And that's going to be, you know, a different thing. All right. So th uh, there are, you know, and this this gets a little bit more complicated when you add two additional you know, ingredients. But, you know, for the sake of this workshop, just to give you guys a feeling, a feeling of uh, a feeling of, you know, how how did they determine how much of this for that feed? So, you know, for us, you know, no, uh, majority people. Mostly we use Pearson square. You know, if you're not if if you're not doing big scale operation and you want to make your own own feed, this would be the the uh, the equation that you do to determine how how much. Okay. Okay, chat. All right. So now we get into the Thailand trip. Uh, that was actually the major part of the funding, the project is to, we believe that, you know, for us extension people to go and get training, you know, some of us, you know, will just take the knowledge and not do anything. So the, the knowledge got, gets stuck with you. But when you bring the farmers and you actually have them do the training, then, you know, there's going to be a, uh, you know, the farmers can do this themselves. And one of the farmers that we brought is uh, Mr. Pida Riola from Saipan to Thailand. And the guy is actually in the process of starting, you know, to make his own feet uh, for, for his operation. So, you know, uh, we started the process of making a, during our hands-on with uh, identifying the feed ingredients, starting with these two pictures at the middle and the right corner bottom we have the vitamins and we have the minerals 
And then to the left there, you got the, the fish oil. To the top, you have your cassava. To the left there is your fish meal and the soybean. And I believe this rice bran. So this was our ingredients to, this is actually the, the handout that I give you guys. This is actually an actual ingredient that you can, if you have all the components, you can use to make tilapia feet. And it has the instruction there on, on, uh, on how to make it. So on the left side of the instruction, you have, uh, for the rice bran, you need 210 grams. For the cassava, 250 grams. For the mineral, 10 grams. Fish meal, 100 grams. Soybean, uh, 400 grams. And oil is about 20 grams. Okay? So taking this uh, ingredient list and following the procedures, you can actually make the pellets. Okay? So the first thing that the participants, this is uh, Mr. Ariola, and that's Mr. San Palacios. I don't know if any of you guys know Sam, but he's from Tinian. He represented Tinian. So uh, this is the AIT no feed, no research facility, feed making. So the first thing is uh, first thing is basically weigh, weighing the ingredients. We got all the, this, this, that's the, I believe this is the vitamin. There's the oil. I think it was just a vegetable oil that they used for the, the you know, project. I think that's the cassava. So each ingredient is weight using a scale to make sure that we got the, you know, proper you know, portions. All right, go ahead, John. Okay, and the next thing is to add water to starchy ingredients and heat until the important thing here is it gelatinizes. You know, that's what I was saying earlier. So basically, the cassava was, you know, the, the binder. So that's basically what we're going to do here, is we're going to, you know. So, you know, starting with the, uh, the gas stove and this pan, and then they got this in, it, it, there's actually water in here. So they got it to uh, near boiling, and then they put the cassava in. And then they, uh, they just keep on stirring it, basically, until you see that the consistency is, you know, sticky. And then at that point, they added the, the other ingredients that were mixed into the, to the binder, and then, you know, mix it up and put it into the container for hand mixing to almost, you know, make it like almost a dough. Okay. Okay, so this is Sam just continuously. That's Jerry Atalik watching Sam. That's Mr. Ariola watching Sam. They should, uh, the other picture should be Jerry relieving Sam from, but <laughs> and they were just watching Sam. So, you know, they kept on. So, pelletizer is basically, that pelletizer is just this thing. You know, but a bigger tube. The only difference between that and this is that there is a pulley here and a pulley connected to a motor with a belt, and that's what get thing, uh, gets this thing going. But otherwise, everything is the same. So, you know, for today's purpose, we're just gonna do this by hand. Okay? So basically, after they, you know, finish mixing everything together, uh, on top of the catcher here, yeah, they just uh, have this thing which I think it was just prefab, fabricated. They took the, the ingredient and they just little by little push it into this thing. It catches that. And then you can see here that it's starting to come out. You know, it's just like 
making ground beef, basically. Here's a picture, and that's the, fine, the end product that's on the pan. Okay. Uh, if, uh, uh, to me, it looks like every time you got to feed your tilapia, you got to go through that process. Can you produce X number of quantity of feed and store them for continuity of feeding? Mm -hmm. And would the nutritional value um, uh, be diminished? Or the potency diminished? Uh, like I said earlier, vitamin is one ingredient, you know, that, that's why it's advisable to uh, use your feed less than three or two months. Yeah, uh, because, you know. Uh, on that line, uh, mm. uh, you were saying to use your feed two or three months. So whatever you make now, mm. it appears that it's wet, mm -hmm. right? So is it be good for two or three months? No more? Uh, I, will, I will discuss that. Oh. It's on the next slide. Okay, so basically to show you that, you know, the thing is falling down, so the lady pooks, uh, you know, the, uh, picked it up and she start, you know, playing with it so that, you know, a long spaghetti line would be basically smaller. Yeah. So basically you're shooting for you know, the mouth of the tilapia. So, you know, if you're feeding the adult size, you know, their mouth are pretty big. So a pellet like this would be good enough. Okay. And then drying is the, the next step. So basically for them, it's just a shelf in their palapala. And they just, you know, leave the thing there to dry over one day period. Some places they'll put it out in the sun, put a, like a tarp, spread this out in the sun and, and you know, dry, uh, sun dry it. Some people, they build a solar dryer. Yeah, uh, I think the deal with the solar dryer is air has to come from the bottom, goes up and exits at the top. You know, so similar to a greenhouse. Yeah, a solar dryer would be, you know, and then, you know, if you can afford, you know, uh, drying this in an oven, then why not, you know, do it. But, you know, uh, if you're going to just, you know, dry it without any extra, no, you know, input, then, you know, do it for 24 hours. Okay? And, and basically, how good is your, to determine how good is your feet, do what's called a feed water stability test. And, you know, basically, you want your feet not to dissolve, uh, at least, you know, for seven hours. Get a, ba a beaker or a jar, put water in there, put your feet. If it dissolves in about 30 minutes, then, you know, there's something wrong with your binder. In, in doing the feed there and uh, pelletizing them, uh, do we need to add anything to, to have buoyancy? Uh, buoyancy is uh, if you're do using, and that's why people sometimes use a, an extruder, you know, to basically, through the cooking process, using an extruder, like what Mr. Ankubio was talking about, the UOG machine, the $75,000 machine. You know, if you put the ingredients in there, it'll basically cook, the ingredients before it comes out. My, so, my fear is that they'll settle immediately down to the bottom and dissolve. Mm. So if you got buoyancy, it lasts longer. Mm. The other trick is basically, you know, the, the oil. Uh, so remember, uh, if you combine water and oil, you know, what, what's on top? Okay. The oil. Yeah. So, you know, that's... that's uh, from the process in the, in the grinder, you also have air. a lot of air pockets inside. Yeah. So it, it will spin by itself. All right, so uh, after drying it, basically, uh, you know, if you're going to be storing it, uh, advice would be to put it in a plastic new uh, bag. I mean, if you guys buy feet, you will see that, you know, they are lined with plastic or the inside is, you know, you will see some like wax type material. And basically that, that, that is just, you know, to prevent prevent anything from going in, you know, mold and all those kind of things. 
Uh, storing, very important, keep feeds and ingredients dry, dry, cool, and away from pests. So above the floor, away from the wall. All right, uh, so that you can, you can have those airflow and make sure that your walls, your floor, where the roof meets the walls, the floor is, uh, you know, is secure enough so that you don't have the vermin uh, going in and out. All right, and that concludes my presentation with a tilapia fillet fried, ready to be chowed on. Where is it? Where? <laughs>